your whole home theater? Is there a percentage that you should allocate towards your electronics, your speakers, and then extraneous other stuff like lighting and, and seating and stuff like that? <clears throat> um, that's a good question. Uh, off the top of my head, it was 20,000. I would say 15 to 20%, correct me if I'm wrong here, Enzo, I'm pulling these numbers out of thin air, 15 to 20% probably on acoustic treatment. Um, uh, a lot of people do their own light control in the rooms, but sometimes that can be part of that. Um, and then uh, really the rest of the budget gets cut up between uh, obviously projector and screen. Uh, at, at that price point, you're probably looking around sort of uh, what 10 grand for your your screen and projector and then you know the, the balance on your audio or or maybe i haven't quite got that right i don't know what do you, what do you think Enzo? yeah i think i think a lot of people i mean 20k obviously australian wise you know you're in that territory of probably you know um e-shift projectors um with pretty basic screens um and then that rest of that percentage is you know nowadays three to four thousand dollars on a receiver um automatically leaves you with um uh, whatever's left over for speakers. So uh, very hard. Anything under three thousand dollars for a receiver is always going to be a bit hard um, to to work with. Same with projectors. You know, if you're in that space and you can only afford, you know, a three to five thousand dollar projector, you know, that doesn't not much exists in that space. I think you've got BenQ and you've got the Epsons, um, and then that you know um, that big chunk of it. I mean. Andrew's always said to people, if you're on a limited budget, spend a bit more on the receiver so you never have to change it. You know, make sure it's got those extra channels. Uh, you know, make sure it's, if you eventually want to, if the end game is 11.4.4, you know, make sure that receiver can do it or make sure that the um, receiver can process it because if it only has, you know, nine um, channels, at least it can process 12 or 13 um, and, and just plan that way. Um, but I, I think probably um, the acoustics always gets left out of the budget. Um, and we always try and push people that, you know, we don't really do a room unless you're prepared to invest that money in acoustics. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, I definitely would agree with Andrew there. I think probably a good 10 to 15% of that budget would be acoustics. And then, you know, you've got your seven to ten grand on projector and screen uh, and then that leftover is always going to be receiver and, and speakers would you spend more money on speakers or other receiver <clears throat> um yeah i see again I, I think if, the answer it, here is permanency um yeah let's permanency, look at, exactly you know um what are you going to have to change in, in years to come speakers if you get a good selection of speakers now first of all they're bolted on or into the wall or something else you don't really want to keep ripping those out and good speakers are good speakers we haven't seen you know radical i mean you know some people would yeah. argue but uh, effectively a loudspeaker concepts have remained fundamentally the same yes there have been yeah. changes but buying a good speaker that reproduces good sound will do that for a long time so i would be inclined to say you know, look, your amplifier might change because of codecs and software and especially HDMI, curse you, HDMI. Um, you know, so you're more likely to have to change uh, a processor uh, in time, in years, whereas your speakers will probably stay. Your amplifiers will probably stay. So we urge people to look at investing into things that are going to stay in your room. So spend the money on good amps, spend the money on good speakers where you can, um, spend the money on acoustic treatment. That's not likely to change. Mm. Um, but the things that are going to change are, are those that are technologically vulnerable. So they are going to be possibly projectors, possibly AVRs or processors um, with, you know, uh, as we're now getting into FPGAs, did I say that correctly, and, and programmable systems, in theory we should have longevity, but we still see those evolving. Um, but, uh, you know, and of course marketing departments are always pushing 
new things. You know, people are wanting to push us from 4K to 8K. They're wanting yep. to push us from HDMI 2.0 to 2.1, and so on and so forth. So those things are vulnerable. Uh, so, you know, put the money into good speakers, put the money into good amps, um, and then, you know, consider carefully what you're going to do with the things. So, you know, your your AVRs and, and processors and projectors other things that are likely to change. You can give some thought to how you're going to do that. Do you start off with a cheap, cheap unit for now, knowing that you're going to save up your pennies and get one of the big guns? Or do you just, you know, f find the money and put the big gun in now? That That's a personal question. But mm. all of this always circles back to, you know, our, our belief in doing a room design and discussing with a professional all of these aspects and, and then realizing that they're circular arguments they always come back to you know uh, one point in the room that then forces you to make all these other decisions which then again is controlled by budget so i'm not sure if i drifted off topic there but um no, yeah it makes sense but anyone that comes over and subscribes to us obviously we'll, we'll factor in over the next couple of weeks um who's also subscribed to shane's and um we'll um give away a, a free room design um which uh, obviously, depending whether it's a new room or an established room, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, we can obviously do anything. Um, and uh, that means that those people get to work quite closely with myself and Andrew um, and build that relationship and maximizing your space and your existing equipment, if you've got existing equipment or looking at starting from scratch. This is like a $2,000 value. And if you do guys, if you guys do come over from the chat here, from this video, Make sure you guys comment on one of their videos. Let them know that you actually did watch this stream. And that will make it easier for them to pick a winner. Absolutely. So who's going to win this, this extravagant prize of room design for your future home theater? And also, since we're talking about uh, subscribing, guys, I also have a Patreon as well. So if you guys want to get up with me, you can contact me any time of the day if I'm awake. For as little as a dollar a month, up to ten dollars a month. Listen, there's all kinds of good, good treats if you sign up for Patreon. I got a bunch of my Patreon guys here in the chat now. But for as little as a dollar a month, listen, you get some exclusive content, discounts on AV equipment. I'm partners with uh, Value Value Electronics. So if you're here in the U.S., you want to buy a new Denon receiver, a Marantz receiver, an NAD, a Bowers and Wilkins, a Trinov. Whatever it is, listen, if you are a Patreon subscriber, then I will save you some money going directly from them. Who knows? Maybe if you sign up, I might be able to save you some money in Australia as well with these guys. So for as little as a dollar a month, sign up for 10 bucks a month. Listen, I'll even video call you on Skype, on FaceTime, whatever. We can talk about your marital problems. Whatever you got, sign up on uh, Patreon. So that's available for you guys. Links are going to be in the video's description down below.